Hello, thank you for tuning in to the Math Guy. Today we'll be looking at annuities. Um, we have different formulas for annuities, so we'll be looking at different formulas as we go through. A lot of it's going to be very similar in the fact that we're still going to be filling the values in, simplifying it down to get our final answer. So our first problem for today reads that we want to find the amount of an ordinary annuity of 12 monthly payments of $100 that earns interest at 12% per year compounded monthly. So our formula for this is going to be similar to some of the last formulas that we had with compound interest. Uh, if we go through, it's going to look something like this. S equals R times the quantity of 1 plus R over N raised to the NT power minus 1 all over R over N. Now, this formula is going to be dealing mostly with future value. Uh, we're going to be going through and using this for this problem here as well as the next problem. It's going to be the same formula. If you want to go through and find something called the present value, it's going to be a little bit different. Okay? For this problem, if you look, we have the variables of S, R, lowercase r, lowercase n, and T. We have some more variables this time to work through and use. Okay? So we go through and break these pieces of information down. Capital S is going to be the final total. Okay? It's going to be our total amount in the end. Uh, capital R. This is going to be our monthly payment. Okay, that's our monthly payment. Lowercase r, just like before, was our rate. Lowercase n, just like before, is the number of times it's compounded. And lowercase t is once again time in years. Okay, so as you notice, a lot of these variables are repeating. They're still being used the same way. So if we go through, we can actually erase this stuff now and start filling in everything we know. So as we read through the problem, just transfer the information over. So it says find the amount of an ordinary annuity of 12 monthly payments. Well, if we're making 12 monthly payments, we're making one payment every month, we're making 12 of those, there's 12 months in a year. So 12 monthly payments is the same as one year. So t equals one. These monthly payments are of $100 each. We said that capital R was how much pay what our payments were. Those payments are $100. So we have that so far. We have two of the four pieces of information we need to find something else. It says it earns interest at 12% per year. That's our lowercase r. That's our rate. That's 12%. 12% same as 0.12. And it's compounded monthly. Okay. Compounded monthly means we're having interest added every month. Okay. So lowercase n... It's 12. It's the number of times it's compounded in a year. So we go through, we have all this information. We have four of the five things. We can find lowercase, well, capital S. So we fill in everything we know. Capital S equals 100 times the quantity of 1 plus R over N. So we have 0.12 over 12 raised to the 12 times 1 power. All minus 1 all over r over n, which is also 0.12 over 12. Okay, I know it's a little small. Uh, if you need to go back through, you can make it a bigger window. It'll show up a little bit better. Um, or just go back through. Like I said, I try to explain every piece as I fill this stuff in. So S equals, I'm going to go through and start simplifying everything we have here down to the next step. So leave the 100 go because we can't multiply that till the end. And if you look, we have R over N in here twice. So if we do it once, we can simply transfer the number over. In this case, we have 0.12 divided by 12, which means we have an answer of 0.01. So anytime you see 0.12 over 12, it's the same as 0.01. We also have raised to the 12 times 1 power. Well, 12 times 1 is the same as 12 minus 1. Okay. On the denominator, we already found that 0.12 divided by 12 was 0.01. So this is our new form of the same problem. We took it from here and moved it down to here. We're going to start simplifying it down some more. So we move it down to another line. S equals 100 times the quantity of all this stuff here. So let's break it down a little bit more. 
we have 1 plus 0.01. 1 plus 0.01 is 1.01 raised to the 12th power. Minus 1 all over 0.01. Uh, to save some space, we'll bring it over here right to the right. We really can't do anything here. It's another small intermediate step. All we have to take care of is this exponent right here. So the 100 stays as it is. The 0 0.01 is still in the denominator. We still have that minus 1. We just have to take on our calculator and do 1.01 raised to the 12th power. We rewrite that over here. 1.01 raised to the 12th power. When you round it off, is about 1.13. The more accurate, accurate you are at this step, the more accurate and close your answer is going to be to a real life answer. So if you go out six decimal places, you're going to be more accurate than we are here going out to two. But to save space, we're just going out to two. We're going to go through and take care of some more combining like terms that we can do. But the only thing we combine together at this point is the 1.13 minus 1, which gives us 0.13, says then put over 0 0.01. At this point, we will take 0.13 divided by 0 0.01. So we have 100 times 13, which on your calculator, if you take 100 times 13, you get the capital S equals $1,300. Okay. Now, as I said, back here at this step right here, okay, I'll put it in green, that step right there. If you're more accurate at that step, your answer would actually be somewhere closer to $1,268.25. But if, as you see, we only rounded it right here to two decimal places, which means our answer is off a little bit. Okay. So be very careful when you do your rounding. If you round off the two decimal places, it will not be as accurate as using six or eight decimal places. So make sure you pay attention to ask your teacher how close you want them to be estimated out. Our second problem is going to be another problem just like the last one. It's going to use the same exact formula, mainly because that last formula we use is also known as the future value annuity formula. Uh, usually the future value formula is used for any time you're looking at the future. So in this problem it says, as a savings program towards their child's college education, the parents decided to deposit $100 at the end of every month into a bank account paying interest at a rate of 6% per year, compounded monthly. If the savings program began when the child was 6 years old, how much will have accumulated by the time the child turns 18? So we had the same formulas before, which means we need the same piece of information. We still need R, and we still need our lowercase r, our lowercase n, and our lowercase t. So we start looking. They're saying they're depositing $100 at the end of every month. So not only are they making payments of $100, but it's also going to be done monthly. So our lowercase n is 12, 12 payments a year. Easy as cake. Just that one little line there allows us to have two pieces of information. It also says at a rate of 6% per year. So lowercase r is 6%, the same as 0 0.06. The last thing we need is lowercase t, which is the number of years. It was started when the child was 6. We want to find out what's going to happen when they're 18. So we take 18 minus 6, and we get 12. So we know t is 12 years. So we have all this information, we can just go through and start filling it into our formula. So we have that S equals 100 times the quantity of 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12 raised to the 12 times 12, right like that, power, minus 1 all over 0 0.06 over 12. Okay, So we have that. Just like before, we want to go through and start breaking things down. If we look, we have 0 0.06 over 12 in two places. We take 0 0.06, we divide it by 12, we get 0 0.005. So anytime we see a 0 0.06 here, divided by 12, we can put in 0 0.005 instead. Save some time as we go through. So S equals 100 times the quantity of 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12. We already said that's 0 0.005, so we have 0 0.005. 
raised to the 12 times 12 power, which is 144, all minus 1, all over 0 0.06 divided by 12, which is 0 0.005. Found that out over here. Okay? So that one piece of information was used twice. We go through from here and we start breaking it down a little more. So S equals 100 times the quantity of, we have 1 plus 0 0.005. 1.005 raised to the 144th power minus 1 all over 0 0.005. So to save some space since you know we only have a limited amount of space, we'll go through and we'll write the next step here off to the side. So the 100 still stays as it is. We can't do anything with that until the end. So we have the 0 0.005 and the denominator stays as it is. We still subtract 1. The only thing we can take care of is this exponent. So we do on our calculator 1.005 raised to the 144th power. You should get 2.0508. So from here we can take care of the subtraction. We can subtract 1 from that. So we have S equals 100 times the quantity of 2.0508 minus 1 is 1.0508. This is all over 0 0.005. The only thing we can take care of is inside these brackets. We can do the division. So we get 100 times the quantity of 210.16. We do that multiplication of 210 times 0.16 times 100. We get a final answer of S equals $21,016. So after 12 years of these parents going through and putting $100 away at the end of every month, the account gets 6% per year interest compounded monthly. They'll have $21,016 saved up for this child's college tuition. Which, if you look at it, they're going through, they're spending $100 a month times 12 months, that's going to be $1,200 a month, $1,200 times 12 years is $14,400, that's how much they put away. They're making about $7,000 interest over those 12 years. The interest added up pretty quick, so it's a good thing to put money away. It helps. It saves money in the long run. You figure they're actually spending $14,400 instead of $21,000. So they actually made a win-win situation here. Our last problem for the day reads as follows. After making a down payment of $2,000 for an automobile, Murphy paid $200 per month for 36 months with interest charges at 12% per year compounded monthly on the unpaid balance. What was the original cost of the car, and what portion of the total car payments went towards interest charges? This problem is going to have multiple steps. We have about three steps we have to go through to get finished with this problem and actually figure everything out. Uh, the first thing we have to realize is this is going to be a little bit different than the last two problems. This is using a different formula, one called the present value formula, mainly because we're looking at what's going on right now. Murphy bought this car 36 months ago three years ago pretty much and we have to find out what's happening right now now that it's paid off kind of how much money he totally paid for the car how much he should have actually paid if he didn't have the interest so on and so forth so the first thing we need to look at is our new formula which is P equals capital R times the quantity of 1 minus 1 plus R over N raised to the negative NT power all over R over N. If you look, this formula looks very similar to the last one. The only thing is instead of an S, we have a P, capital R, lowercase r, lowercase n, lowercase t. They all stand for the same things. Okay, So everything stands for the same things. We just have a P instead of an S. So we want to go through and find out which four of these five pieces of information we have, then we can figure out which one we want to find or have to find first. So if we look it says here making a down payment of $2,000. We don't need that right now. We'll come back to that in a moment. He paid $200 per month. So capital R is $200. That's how much he made for each payment. 36 months. Okay. 
that's saying that he paid this for 36 months. 36 months is the same as three years. So lowercase n, or lowercase t, I mean, is three. Interest charges at 12% per year. So lowercase r is 12%, which is the same as 0.12. And it says compounded monthly. So lowercase n is 12. 12 payments per year. You also pull that same piece of information for right here out of this. Okay. So we have all this information. What we want to find is capital P. That's what we'll be finding. That's how much he actually would have paid for this car. That's how much he actually owed on the car. So if we go through, we fill all this information in. P equals capital R, which is $200, times the quantity of 1 minus 1 plus R over N, which is 0.12 over 12, raised to the lowercase n time, negative N times T power. So we have negative 12 times 3, all over R over N, which is 0.12 over 12. So we have all this. We just want to go through and start breaking things down. So we know one of the things we want to break down is 0.12 over 12. We do that division, we get 0 0.01. So every time we have that 0.12 over 12, we can put in 0 0.01 instead. So we'll break it off over here to the right. The 200 stays as it is. We work inside these, these brackets. So we have 1 minus 1 plus 0.01. 0, 1, raised to the negative 12 times 3 power, which is negative 36, all over 0.12 over 12, which is 0 0.01. So we can go through now and start combining some more like terms. So P equals 200 times the quantity of 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.01, which is 1.01, .01, raised to the negative 36 power, all over 0 0.01. Okay. We follow the order of operations through. We want to go through and to the exponents. So we have 200 times the quantity of 1 minus. We have 1.01 .01 raised to negative 36 power, which gives us 0.6989. And this is all over 0 0.01. The next thing we have to do is still combine like terms, break things down, simplify it. The 200 stays as it is. We work in the brackets. We have 1 minus 0.6989. We do that subtraction, we get 0.3011. This is all over 0 0.01. We take care of that division. We have 200 times 30.11. We take care of the multiplication. We get P equals $6,022. This is the amount of the loan, of the loan. Back when Donald, well, back when Murphy bought this car, not Donald, he paid, he got a loan for $6,022. So that amount of the loan is how much he owed yet after the down payment. So if we look, what was the original cost of the car? We take the $6,022 and we add $2,000 to it. That's $8,022. That's the cost of the car. When he bought this car, he had to pay a total of $8,022 for it. He only had $2,000. He had to get a loan of $6,022. The other thing we have to do is find out how much interest of all of his payments went towards the cost of this car. So if we go through, we can say, okay, he was paying $200 a month for 36 months. So we do 2,000 times 36. We get a total of 7,200. He paid the bank a total of $7,200. Well, his loan was only for $6,022. So we do the subtraction, 7,200 minus 6,022. We will get an answer of $1,178. That's how much Murphy had to pay in interest charges. So he paid back the $6,022 he borrowed and an extra $1,178.